and social media outlets spend a considerable amount of time and resources calling attention to man-made climate change and its consequences due to irresponsible, unregulated human activity. Meanwhile, science claims microorganisms sit at the base of the entire trophic edifice, the infrastructure of the natural world, if you will. Yet if the edifice of nature is crumbling down, why isn't the basic structure addressed in any of these efforts? Legislation protecting microorganisms has yet to even be written. During the following minutes, we'll embark on a journey, following a group of journalists set on unveiling the truth. Are microorganisms in fact pillars on which the natural world stands? Or have we been misled? Are microorganisms micro at all? And most importantly, are microorganisms even real? Of course microorganisms are real. They're everywhere. They're in the soil, they're in the air, they're in the water, they're even within our own body. So dinoflagellates are single cells with no brain. It's just one microscopic organism that you need a microscope to observe. So their responses are very simple. So any situation that has sufficient force will result in them producing a flash of light. So that could be waves breaking, it could be something swimming by them, like a fish or a dolphin, or even a ship moving by them. So it's like a reflex. They feel the force and then they immediately respond. Sure, a few dazzling lights, shiny dancing colors, might fool the untrained investigator into abandoning the quest for truth. But even if these bright spectacles of life were in fact the product of tiny living beings, is that all they can do? The team now turns to Dr. Peter Franks, a distinguished oceanographer, to demonstrate the monstrous implications some of these tiny organisms supposedly have. So demoic acid is a natural chemical produced by phytoplankton. It's a particular diatom that makes it. And this is really weird because it's a toxin produced by a diatom. There's no other diatom we're aware of that produces toxins. Usually the toxins come from dinoflagellates. Um, so domoic acid is a naturally occurring compound and it happens that it binds to glutamate receptors in your neurons and keeps them open and so your brain cells kind of explode because stuff keeps going into them. And it's not pretty. Uh, how does it kill marine organisms? Well, you get a big phytoplankton bloom, they all produce domoic acid, and then something eats those phytoplankton and concentrates the toxin in it. And so initially the symptoms are things like your tongue will go numb, your fingers go numb, flippers if you have them. But it can be fatal. It can have long-term effects. You lose your short-term memory and sometimes that's permanent, which is bad. We've seen the dancing lights, and we've heard how near-invisible particles, even shorter than Jorge, can take out our large marine mammals. It still does not explain why experts all over the world claim that microorganisms constitute the base of our trophic web, that without them there would be nothing else. So once again, the team is left restlessly scrambling for the truth, even going so far as to track down Scripps worm professor Dr. Greg Rouse as he enjoys a vacation. Will they ever get a straight answer that this whole field is a hoax? Perhaps a relaxed Dr. Rouse will let the truth slip when the team once again asks, are microorganisms real? Of course microorganisms are real. I've even seen them. We wouldn't be here without them. This is actually a microbial world. <laughs> Living in a microbial <laughs> world. So there's this incredible system going on, actually, that's mo mainly microbial. It's called the microbial loop. Uh, the fishes and the zooplankton and the whales that play in the system, but in a sense, the real system that's going on is the microbial loop. 
the more we studied, the more we figured out that it was much more an interlocking web of consumption and degradation. I'm going to stop. Months later, after the team's last encounter with Dr. Rouse, they travel to a remote, undisclosed location through the vast, unpredictable waters of the Pacific Ocean. But mostly they get smashed up. Whenever we run a net through them, all you'll end up with is a few of the problems. So you need a robot to see these problems. The team infiltrates the facilities, giving us a glimpse into what happens behind closed doors. Dr. Rouse runs one of the highest operations of its kind, even if the lab does look a little run down. The stakes are high, and their last encounter didn't go well. The team is completely convinced that Rouse's lab holds the secret they've been dying to expose. Microorganisms are not real. But are they? Beyond fancy lachos, beyond strange, scary toxins. Microorganisms. What are they? Are they? Hey, what are you doing? Science really is a way of understanding things and learning to do good science is really hard. I used to have big arguments with people about creationism and climate change and evolution, these kinds of things, and that's a hypothesis. And so what do you do with a hypothesis? You test it. And the beauty of a statement like the earth is flat or any of these sorts of things is we can test them. That's the essence of science is that you or I or anybody out there can go and test these things and come to their own conclusions. Um, I'm happy to communicate science to people who want to listen to me, but arguing with people whose minds are set and who will not do the scientific effort of investigating their faith and their beliefs and actually try and test them, there's not much to talk about there. So you claim that microorganisms don't exist I'll do you one better. Fish don't exist. And I can prove it to you. Y no 